So everyone has those super embarrassing stories about their childhood that they never like to share, but without those stories, they wouldn't be who they are today. I have quite a few of my own, but we only have time to talk about one today. So when I was four or five years old, there was this secret place in my house. It was a place that was just for me. It was a place where magic was real. And this place was under the kitchen sink. And my mom, growing up, didn't really like makeup. She only had it for parties and fancy events and stuff. So all of her fancy concealers and lotions and perfumes used to come to me to play with. And I used to sit for hours and hours under my kitchen sink, mixing together lotions with perfumes to see what would happen, or soap bubbles with concealer to see what would happen. And I wasn't just doing this because I thought I was Hermione. Only maybe a little bit I thought I was Hermione. But the primary reason for me doing this was my brother. So my brother had severe asthma, and he had a lot of allergies. And he had pneumonia several times when we were younger. And I used to see my mom giving him medicine, and he wasn't really getting better. He was still crying. So I thought I was making better medicines because mine looked and smelled much better than the goopy black stuff my mom was force feeding him. So moral of the story, I was really interested in caring about my brother, in chemistry, in medicine, and in Harry Potter. But only three of these have really shaped my professional and academic journey. So caring, chemistry, and medicine led me to secure an internship at Acetylon Pharmaceuticals the summer after my sophomore year of high school. And there, I was really, really excited to start doing research on their cancer drug. So, but my project was to apply this cancer drug to malaria. Now, this was the first time that I had really thought about malaria, other than reading about it in one sentence in my AP Biology textbook. And as I started to read more about malaria, I started to make my project. I learned that malaria is a parasitic infection that is caused by the plasmodium parasite, but spread through the bite of a mosquito. And these mosquitoes actually are responsible for killing more humans than humans are. Malaria is also responsible for Africa losing $12 billion in GDP every year. So coming from a science and engineering background, all these statistics and facts really spoke to my brain. But one really spoke to my heart. And that was that a child under the age of five dies every 60 to 90 seconds because of malaria. So since I started talking, three children have already died. Being 16 myself at the time, this was a really big deal for me. It still is. So after my first day, I ran home and I told my parents about what I had learned. And to my surprise, they knew all about malaria. My mom had had malaria multiple times when she was younger. She had the high fever, the chills. She had to take the medicines that resulted in hallucinations. My grandparents later told me that at one point, they were really worried that she would end up dying. So now malaria had spoken to my heart, to my brain, and had now impacted someone in my own family. And I started to really care about malaria. But I was just working there. What could I do? I started to call my friends about malaria. I started to post on Facebook. I started to trying to change the world 140 characters at a time. Because it is only by really caring about something that we can change it. And the second caring clicked for me, action resulted. And that was me spreading the word, telling more people about it. And through doing all this, I realized that people my age didn't really care about infectious diseases because they had very little awareness of them. So I saw and still see malaria as this problem that needs solving with a new and innovative approach. And so I founded Malaria Free World. 
We are a nonprofit organization aimed at spreading awareness about malaria as well as funds for eradication efforts. We also empower students in countries where malaria is prevalent for them to become the change makers that they want to see in their, in their countries. Because we believe that the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. And that if they know, and more importantly, care about a problem sooner, they will make a difference in the future. And with Malaria Free World, we've done lots of events all over the world. But I want to talk to you guys about some events that we did in India a couple of years ago. So I spoke at a boarding school where malaria was actually pretty common. And surprisingly, the boarding school gave the students all the preventative measures that they needed. They gave them the bed nets to sleep under. They gave them the preventative pills to take so that they wouldn't catch the disease. And they still weren't using them. They were still getting malaria. And granted, if I'm 16 and someone tells me, an adult, to sleep under a bed net that's hot and stuffy, I totally agree I wouldn't do it either unless I really cared about why I was doing it. So I talked to the girls about how malaria is completely preventable and how if they use these preventative measures, we can defeat it. And even though no one at that school had died because of malaria, it kills almost 600,000 people in the world every year. And if the girls could come together and fight this disease that kills so many people every year, they should do it. And I gave them the tools and told them the resources they had available to fight it in their communities. And I was really excited that day because all the girls were really engaged with me. They were having a discussion with me, someone their age, rather than someone in a person of power ordering them around. It was a really good day. And a year later, the headmistress actually shared with me that at the school, they had not seen a single case of malaria that year. And this was because all the girls were checking on each other. They were like, oh, did you sleep under a bed net today? Or did you take your preventative medication? Remember the malaria girl told us to do that? And because they did this, because they came together and cared about this disease and fighting it in their community, they were able to defeat it. And that gave me real hope that this is something that we can do. But while I was in India, I also saw the devastating effects that malaria has on populations. I saw, uh, this is a family, Rahul is the child up there. He was five, and at the time he actually had malaria. In this picture, he has malaria. And he had had malaria for the past week. And his single mother was at home with him, taking care of him. And she worked a day-to-day -day job which means that if she didn't work one day, she did not get paid. There was no job security, no guarantee that the next week when she goes back, she would have her job waiting for her. So she told me that she actually couldn't put food on the table the next week because she was staying at home with Ruffle that week. And she was also prescribed a full course of medication to give to Rahul just so that he would get better from his malaria. But she cut the pills in half and saved them and to save the rest of them so that the next time one of the three of them got malaria, she would give it to them. So being there, this was really heartbreaking for me, so we tried to help out. Malaria is not contagious from person to person, so I was able to play with the kids. We gave them our company tattoos and played with them, talked to them about how they should go and tell their friends how to not get malaria so their families are not in the same situation. We gave them bed nets for them to sleep under so that this wouldn't happen again. But the moral is that this story is really resonated in thousands of wor homes worldwide because not taking a full course of medication leads to the parasite developing resistance, which then leads to the treatment not working, which then leads to more malaria, which then leads to further poverty and despair. So how can we stop the cycle? How can we truly end malaria? Well, we can start by simply caring about it. And in this global we, in this global we includes academics, professionals, people from all fields, really caring and truly working towards ending this disease. One prime example of one of us who's doing this really, really well is Bill Gates. Bill Gates has taken malaria to heart. He's like, he wants to end this disease because he's more afraid about a worldwide malaria epidemic then he's worried about nuclear war. And because of this, 
he's led massive change. And it really only takes someone caring about something to make a difference. And because of people like Bill Gates leading global efforts to end malaria, in the latest World Health Organization report, we actually see malaria cases decrease by 50%. But we're still not there. We still need more funding towards malaria. We need more research. We need better cures, a more effective vaccine. We need more government involvement, more policies. We need all these things. But the most important thing is that we need more funding. And we st still see this lacking. In 2010, we actually saw $2 billion go towards hair loss treatments, and only 500 million go towards malaria. Now, it is really easy for all of us to wake up in the morning and look at ourselves in the mirror and see a problem. But it is really hard for us to think and care about a problem that is happening half the world away. But I ask you all to take a step back and look at the global picture. Look at our global community. If something is affecting one part of it, it is really affecting all of us. And I think that today's generation, our generation, is uniquely suited to bring about change in such a global problem, because we are the social media generation. By just clicking post or tweet or waving at someone through Messenger on Facebook, we're able to send our caring to every corner of the world. And by doing this and by harnessing this power, we can make change. At Malaria Free World, we've tried to harness this power and approached members of the government to talk to them about malaria. We've reached out to international research organizations and learned about treatments from them. We've made collaborations with our fellow students who bring about this change on a daily basis. With these students, we've led international events in India and Nigeria to really make a difference where it matters. And we've also partnered with organizations like the UN Foundation and Nothing But Nets to lobby our members of Congress so that they increase global health aid. We've talked to, we've shared our caring with our members of Congress. As United States constituents, we've shared our caring so that the members of Congress care as well. We've shared our caring at the Teen Choice Awards with a bunch of celebrities so that if we care about something and they care about something, they can spread the message to a wider audience. Because only by doing this, only by sharing our caring with people from all different fields, all working together and approaching a problem from different fields, we can achieve a malaria-free world. We are just one organization. So we need everyone to be involved. The simplest thing you can do is spread awareness. Tell your friend about malaria or post on Facebook. Maybe one tweet or one retweet can get one more person involved in the fight. Let me take you back to when I was 16 and I started learning about malaria. What could I do about it? Literally nothing. I was just sitting in a cubicle. But by telling more friends about it, by getting more and more people involved, by taking tiny steps, we as an organization are able to make an impact. And I'm standing here talking to you. But there is no age limit to caring. Just as when I was four years old and was feeding my brother my potion so that he would feel better, anyone can care. And while there's no magical potion out there to eradicate malaria yet, through our caring, we can and will find the secret ingredients. And I believe that our caring and the subsequent taking of action will lead to us ending malaria worldwide. And this will be the generation during which we defeat malaria. Thank you.